Hi, am I audible? Yes, sir. Oh, super. Yes, I think you are audible now. You are not audible till now. Got it, got it. Okay, no, I had to log in from my system as well as my phone. I can't present on my phone. I can't hear on my system. There's some <laughs> problem. <laughs> I guess that's the... latest in terms of the technology and all these things new normal well yes i had the same problem with zoom but somehow i fixed that but okay this is the first time i'm actually using google meet okay right mm. thank you for being here most welcome it's a pleasure uh, we'll have to you'll have to just wait for a little while till we have a small presentation that will be done by vidit singh on this five no problem anna so just give us a few moments before we can start for sure no problem thank you Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. So I think we can begin the session. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible. Are we good to start, or do you want to finish the spices and then? Uh, we'll start off with the spices part first. It is a part of the. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something about the EBSB program. That is the Ek Bharat Shreesh Bharat program that we have. We have been paired by the government of India, the Ministry of Tourism, to uh, have a sort of a coordination when it comes to the. Uh, activities related to tourism and culture and uh, maybe the ethnic uh, 
species, diversity, etc., etc., when it comes to a particular place. So we have been toured, uh, paired with Haryana. And uh, we have been trying to, over the past year and a half, we've been almost two years, I think, we've been trying to learn about Haryana and also give them information about Telangana. So today we are going to talk about these spices that we grow at Telangana, or rather that are very popular here, for which I'd like to invite Vidit to start with a presentation. Vidit is our MSc student, and he has made this presentation for us. He's going to take us through for a little while now. So with it, all yours. Thank you for having me, ma'am. Is it visible? Hello? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. We are here to discuss about the spices of Telangana. From the rustic to the exquisite, Telangana's cuisine is a gastronomic delight, carrying unmistakable stamps of the region's climate, heritage, and neighbors. The dishes ranges from the spicy mutton curry, golichina mamsam, to Hyderabad's most delectable offering, the biryani. Tamarind, chilies, sesame seeds, peanuts have predominant use in this cuisine. Red chilies impart a fiery flavor in the main course dishes. These are the spices of Telangana. These are what helps in defining the Telangana cuisine. Telangites are a hardy lot, untraced by the predominantly hot climate and semi-arid condition of their state. The food of the region, too, reflects this robust character. Most dishes are rustic, with the traditional meal consisting of flat bread, curry dishes, savouries and accompaniments, as well as pickles. Telangana food has influences from Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. The curries have quite bold flavors such as spicy, sour, and nutty. The influence of external powers has influenced every aspect of the Telangana society. From music, dance, cuisine, and literature, the foreign powers have left a mark of their own. This variety and diversity has helped the culture to become richer and more successful. Most of you would have heard of Hyderabadi cuisine, for it is famous all over the world. The Nawabs and Sultans, who ruled the, over the Deccan, brought some of the best cooks from all over the country to make the Deccan the food capital. So much so that when you talk of Telangana or its capital Hyderabad, visions of mouth-watering biryani comes to mind. Talking about the spices, the majority of spices that are utilized in Telangana cuisine are tamarind, chilies, turmeric, curry leaves, sesame seeds, and asafoidas. These six spices make the Telangana cuisine different from the other regions of India. Although other spices such as cloves, peppercorns and ginger are also widely used, but they are common all over the India. Let's talk about tamarind. A fun fact about tamarind. The origin of the word tamarind is from Arabic. Arabic origin where the word tamar means date and Hind as we all know means India. So it was named as the dates of India because of its same similar structure, that of the date. Telangana cuisine is famous for its use of tamarind. Tamarind is a staple of Indian curries and spices dishes where it is often paired with coconut milk to reduce its sour taste. Other spices often mixed with tamarind curries include ginger, turmeric, coriander and garam masala. Tamarind is a rich source of magnesium and is also a great laxative. A lot of dishes in a cuisine revolve around tamarind, one such dish being pachi pulusu. There is probably no other dish as simple as pachi pulusu. Unique to the region, pachi pulusu is the signature dish of Telangana. Unlike rasam, pachi pulusu is raw and uncooked. Except for tempering the juice extracted from the soaked tamarind, this dish doesn't ask for much. Sliced onion and salt also go into the pachi pulusu before tempering. Pulihora, or another tamarind rice preparation, is also an important part of the Telangana cuisine. Chintakaya thoku, which is a raw tamarind pickle, is also another delicacy enjoyed by the people of Telangana. Moving on, next we have chilies. Chili is a tropical and subtropical plant requiring a combination of warm, humid, 
yet dry Maybe weather. I have to disturb you for a moment. I think the yeah. PPT is not moving. Okay, ma'am, let me check. Is it visible now, ma'am? Yes, it is visible now. Yes, better. Okay. So I'll start off with chili again. So chili is a tropical and subtropical plant requiring a combination of warm, humid, yet dry weather. During the growth stage, it needs a warm and humid weather. However, a dry weather is suitable for the fruit maturity. Range between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature for chili growth. Telangana is one of the largest and the major producers of chili in our country, owing to the optimal climate for its growth. In our, in our country, owing the optimal climate for its growth, and the influence of chili can be seen in the cuisine of Telangana. A great number of pickles and chutneys, all of them having some or the other variety of chili, are seen in the Telangana cuisine. Some of them are Mami de Kaya Thoku, or which is a spicy mango pickle with a good amount of red chili in it. And Yusi Rakaya Thoku, which is a gooseberry and chili based chutney. Next, we move on to turmeric. The largest producer of turmeric in India is the state of Telangana. And owing to which, the use of turmeric in Telangana cuisine is immense. Turmeric has been a part of the Ayurvedic treatments for ages. Turmeric is a potent anti-inflammatory and helps in heart ailments. No curry or dal is complete without turmeric in it. Next, we move on to curry leaves. Curry leaves, it is hard to imagine a Tilangna household without curry leaves. The lifeline of every household, curry leaves or curry patta, is used extensively throughout the length of the state. Curry leaves are tempered in hot oil to pour over dals or to make bases for curry. Rich in vitamin A, B, C, B2, calcium and iron, curry leaves also help in digestion problems. Next, we have sesame seeds. Sesame seeds form an important component for the sweets in Telangana. Most of the desserts and sweets are garnished or rolled in sesame seeds. Preparations like ariselu, has sesame as one of its main ingredients. Further, sesame oil is also used in preparing curries and gravy dishes. Mungaku Thoku is a drumstick chutney which utilizes sesame seed for its earthen flavor. Lastly, we have esafoida. Esafoida or heme has its own special place in the Telangana cuisine. Its pungency is utilized in flavoring a lot of curries and even for tempering dal. Heme has a lot of medicinal properties. Being an antifungal and antibacterial, it also helps in regulating the blood sugar levels. With this, we come to the end of this presentation. I hope you all gained some knowledge from it. Thank you so much, Vidit. Thank you, ma'am. It was great learning about the spices that we grow here, which are very integral to Telangana, which was a part of the Ek Bharat Shresh Bharat program. And I see our principal, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Thakur, has joined, and our HOD, Madam Saraswati, is also in the link now. I am hoping Mr. Balakrishnan is in. Yes, yes he's in. You can see him. And yeah. So let us start with a round of introduction. Now, it is for us probably because he's a student, it may be he's an alumnus of uh, IHM Hyderabad. So let me take you through what all achievements Balakrishnan has or uh, how many hats he wears today. So he passed out of IHM Hyderabad in the year 2006. He started his career with Taj Hotels as a THT in 2006. He went on to complete his post-graduation in hospitality management from BHMS Switzerland. He has an experience of working in the hospitality sector in various roles from a guest service supervisor to even owning his own bar in Bangalore which was voted as one of the best 15 bars in India, 2018 by GQ India. He quit his entrepreneurial journey in 2019 and joined Sakura Fresh Beverages and Food Private Limited, 
as a product application specialist. He now does brand advocacy, product training, and product appreciation, apart from being a core member in the product development of beverages. He also has experience in working with major global brands, namely Amrit, Paul John, Jameson Irish, Shifita Gin, to name a few, in terms of brand advocacy and cocktail programs. What is the what is something special or what is so special about today's event? What he is going to talk about is something which is going to be a little out of the box thinking. It is alcohol without alcoholic content. So the session would be on alternate beverages, the emergence of zero alcohol spirits and liqueurs forming an integral part of the beverage menu globally. This would also include trends in the global industry and how individuals and F&B establishments look at mindful indulgence as a core of their non-alcoholic menu. The session would also include details of manufacturing and various nuances on how different it is to get a bottle of a zero alcohol product to the shelf. So this is what we are in for today. Okay. Thank you, Ritma, ma'am. Thank you for the introduction. Can I request our principal to say a few words? For sure. Yeah, I think Mr. Balakrishna has given permission. So he said, for sure. <laughs> so very sure about one thing. And that is, we want to have our own beverage room in the IHM Hyderabad. You know, very exclusive beverage room where we can teach students about uh, uh, the art of beverages, mix mixology, and so on. And create an environment. I mean, when you get into, it should give you a feel of a beverage uh, a room, not that you know, a mix of restaurant and a bar or something like that, a time pass kind of setup we usually have. So, there where uh, I need uh, Mr. Balakrishnan your support for so sure, sir. This side, please come in. And also, apart from this, uh, let's explore the possibility of how IHM Hyderabad can join you in promoting the concept that you're going to talk about today because it's very interesting. In fact, I have shared the link with many of my. Uh, uh, friends who are all 50 plus on this because uh, they are the people who get into different kind of health issues and non-alcoholic attractions will be great. Totally. So, eagerly waiting to listen to you and uh, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. The students, it's a pleasure to talk to you guys. Uh, you know, first time when Rashamam told me that, you know, would you like to do this kind of a session? I was like literally overwhelmed and so excited to actually talk to you about a lot of things that's happening in the beverage space, right? And uh, ma'am, all are from second year students, right? All we of have them are second, second years who are there predominantly in the batch now. Okay. But we have this even running parallelly on YouTube. So okay. it's a stream there where we have even the final years who are FNB interested or who have an interest in the FNB and they're a part of this. Okay. Oh, lovely. Super, super. So that's a wonderful audience. I see there's at least a hundred of you here. <laughs> so I am nervous. I'll be very honest. I've uh, never been so nervous since I left college. But yes, let's start with something very small. I'm going to share my screen. So let me know if it is visible. Yeah. Uh, is the screen visible? Uh, is the screen visible? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, hold on. Is that right? The first time I'm actually using. Uh... Okay. Visible now. Yes, it is. Super, super. All right. So uh, what we're going to talk about today is something called the alternate beverages. See, your beverages that you're learning in your second year is split into two, alcohol and non-alcoholic, right? I am here to talk about non-alcoholic beverages, which actually can double up as an alcohol beverage. So it's a lot of nuances into what goes into creating a perfect non-alcoholic beverage. No, including the texture, the feel, the flavor. No, it's not just about replicating what is existing in the market, but also creating a different segment of product altogether. Right. 
so in your college in your uh, classes you must have heard you must have learned a lot in terms of you know different spirits different liqueurs you know wines and stuff like that right so here this is one more category that we always wish to add you know to an education system which we call as the non alcoholic spirits or liqueurs okay so what you see here in the background is mount fuji which is a very revered mountain in japan uh, so i work with a company called sakura fresh i handle product development r and d you know product application recipe development cocktail programs brand advocacy uh, in fact we are a very small team of eight members so each of us except the finance person tends to do everything in this company okay so our company is headquartered in yokohama i am stationed in bangalore and we have three production facilities one in yokohama in japan one here in bangalore uh, in a place called mysore near bangalore and one in mauritius which is getting set up and should be functional by 2022 march what i also wanted you to see in this photo is the 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 blossoming flowers right in front of the mountain uh, can anybody say what it is cherry blossoms that's correct so it's also called sakura so that is where the name of the company came from sakura fresh right and cherry blossom also is for longevity for peace for health and uh, it blooms only for two weeks in a year so that is the speciality of the flowers and it is very different compared to your regular cherry flowers this is not edible so i did tell you about sakura fresh beverages and food uh, the company is a sister concern of a parent company which is called first agro so first agro is a farming company and we grow a lot of uh, botanicals herbs fruits vegetables quite a lot of them and we have been in this industry for over 11 years uh, the company has been supplying its products to about 250 hotels across this country right so what we are going to talk about today is basically about the sustainable farming practices that we follow what is clean label and why is it trademark uh, the world of zero alcohol bitter spirits and liqueurs uh, our product just an overview uh production techniques storage handling and packaging usage and product application and our global recognition any questions till now no right uh at any point if anybody would have any questions please feel free to stop me and ask questions i'd be more than happy to you know answer your questions as far as i can all right so the company started with a very simple vision so we wanted to give a wide variety of options to people you know in the food and beverage uh, segment uh, food and the beverage and the culinary segment you know for not just about the taste but also we wanted to follow certain guidelines when it comes to health right so when you happen to pick up a particular product from the market the first thing that you always see is the name of the product and what is say for example you pick up uh, a masala from the market right let's just just an example let's say you pick up the biryani masala the first thing you'll see is where is this biryani masala from and what kind of a biryani it is uh, nobody pays attention to what is there in the back of the label right that's a ingredient label which discloses what is there in a particular package that is what defines what goes into it okay so you know most of these products that are available locally in the market have got uh preservatives have got stabilizers have got things like uh, citric acid there are a lot of things that go inside it which we call as fillers and salt right so we wanted to give people uh an experience of the same flavor that they would expect from their favorite brand or even a better flavor without all these added uh ingredients like your preservatives your stabilizers you know and stuff like that and that is how we came across you know we came up with the formulation formation of the company called sakura fresh right and another thing with sakura fresh is that we grow all our products all our botanicals our herbs spices we grow them we have our own farm right and this is what goes into the production in terms of our food and beverage and when it comes to beverage we call it seed to spirit so we grow our we plant our seeds we grow the plants we harvest it and we extract it to create our own spirits right 
and we have also won a lot of awards for our products uh, one range of products is yet to be launched which is the zero alcohol spirits and liqueurs one range has been launched which are the zero alcohol bitters we are the world's first zero alcohol bitters and i will get in you know more into depth of what bitters are when we go towards the slide right and uh, we won 21 awards in the last 5 months uh, which are all global and none of them are from india and all these awards are won by blind tasting and judging okay and you know we call our blend to be fresh clean clear and crisp so fresh because fresh produce clean because there are no artificial ingredients clear because we believe in the clarity of the appearance of the product to be very honest you know the first thing that we do once something is ready is we point it towards a light and we see whether it is clear okay and then crisp you know the flavor the freshness right it all needs to come from the aroma to the palate so that is why it's called fresh clean clear and crisp so our identity seed to spirit concept sustainable farming practices environmental conscious and earth friendly practices only natural ingredients we don't add anything artificial including uh, colors right we don't add any artificial colors or food colors or anything to our products everything has to be from a natural source and we cater to taste as well as health and we work on traditional recipes again reimagined in the healthier way so to begin with the farming practices it's a 165 acres of zero pesticide farm we don't call it organic because we don't know what was there before we took over the farm 11 years ago so we call it zero pesticide we don't put any pesticides weedicides fungicides you know anything which is not natural only natural elements go into the soil right and only 40% of our land is cultivated currently uh, thanks to lockdown uh, we couldn't you know maintain the entire thing our water source is natural from kaveri river and we have six wells it's located at a village called talakad which is near mysore so talakad is actually a very historical place in terms of the karnataka uh, history is concerned so apparently the queen of karnataka had cursed the mysore maharaja because uh, when uh, the the king of so basically talakad was a part of mysore right it was the capital of mysore so when the king was unwell the queen had taken the king for medication to talakad because it was known to have lot of doctors and all these people over there so one of the ministers who was there in the mysore kingdom he took charge of the kingdom and he attacked talakad and you know he told the king queen that boss your time is over i am taking over your place so the queen actually cursed telling that you know the kaveri river will always have whirlpools uh talakad will become like you know uh what do we say like a desert right covered in sand always and uh, the king of mysore will never have a legal hire a male hire a male child right of which actually all three are true although people say that the mysore king recently had a male son no he is also adopted so there is no uh, direct blood lineage that is still there so that is why talakad is actually a very known place in fact many people in uh, in karnataka know about talakad they call it talakadu or sometimes people call it talkadu that is how it is pronounced so our farm area is very close to uh, it's about 2 km 3 km from the kaveri river so we have no problems in terms of water our soil is very good for cultivation and uh, yeah you know actually there are a lot of temples and places which are still being excavated and every month you find something new coming up over there everything is under sand right so it has been cursed and surprisingly the curse still holds uh, we are the largest or i would say we are the largest in asia for uh, the seed bank the seeds that we grow we have over 1 million varieties of only non gmo seeds uh, we have farms in japan as well as india and soon we would be starting farming in mauritius as well because this is what we follow wherever we go we grow what we need and we process what we need out of what we grow okay uh, only natural pesticides fungicides weedicides including we also rescue a lot of dogs so we had 40 about 3 uh, 4 years ago now we have 14 uh, unfortunately we lost 10 of them during lockdown right they were all old it's not that they just died they were all old right even their medication is all natural so they get application of turmeric neem and the likes and uh, only any oral medication is supposed to be home, uh, allopathic rest everything is all natural remedies for them all fit and healthy so we had about 130 skus before lockdown now we have only 30 uh, we lost about 6 to 10 tons of vegetables over two circles two cycles 
uh, because all hotels, restaurants, everything was shut and we were not able to transport them out of our farm. So one thing that we learned during this period was to start processing our products. And that is how we are coming out with, you know, a lot of products in terms of food and beverage. We are launching in the food side, we are launching products like seasonings, marinades, sprinklers and rubs and all these stuff. And uh, in the beverages, we are launching our zero alcohol beverages. We are still supplying greens like lettuce, herbs and the likes to about 200 plus hotels across the country. There's some images of a farm. So the top from the left, top two are the nursery. Uh, just an uh, image of it. These are absolutely, absolutely recent photos. I had somebody send them across to me. Uh, why you see that the mats are all torn up because of heavy torrential rains that we are having here. Right? So it all needs a rebuilding process. Uh, on the top right is where is the secondary nursery. So plants move from the first one, the primary, into the soil directly. The primary is in, in pots and you know bags and stuff like that. And then they move into the soil. What you see left below is again the same. It's a secondary nursery. Uh, the other two photos are fresh passion fruit and chikus that we grow in the farm. So this is these are called the low tunnels because they're low in height. And this is where we grow our herbs. So, you know, the gentleman on the left corner in the white shirt, he handles the entire farming operations all by himself. Nobody interferes in his work. So we grow different varieties of lettuce. We grow herbs, uh, herbs like parsley, sage, oregano, thyme, uh, basil. We have about three, four varieties of parsley. So we have curled parsley, we have Asian parsley, fat, flat parsley. Oh, uh, a lot of varieties of lettuce, Japanese greens like shiso, mizuna, uh, oregano, sage, coriander, and all very common that we grow over there. Then we grow pok choy. Uh, what you see in the bottom left is basically one of the gentlemen trying to harvest pok choy. Uh, kale, dandelion. These are some of the greens that we grow. So that's about our farm. So why we call ourselves clean label? Clean label primarily because it contains only natural ingredients. Uh, we do not use any product products derived from genetically modified produce. So anything that has been GMO, we don't touch. Our products are all non-GMO. Facility is ISO certified and very, very recently HACCP certified. HACCP is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. Uh, are they familiar about HACCP, Rakhama? Yes, they've heard of HACCP. Great. So HACCP is a certification program for hygiene. And uh, fact, I'd like Hazard to add that we are certified, HACCP certified at college here. Oh, excellent. Superb. Superb. So they definitely will know what HACCP is, right? So there are a lot of guidelines that we need to follow when it comes to HACCP. There is an audit every year and every quarter there is a visit by somebody, one of these HACCP agents to see if we are actually following these rules and regulations, right? Not just before the audit that we keep doing things. So, you know, they come and they check very often. Uh, there are no artificial or chemically manufactured preservatives that we add into our products. Even if we need to add any preservative in our products, it's generally vitamin E. Right, tocopherol, vitamin E, and most of our products are vegan compliant. Right, we also use products like milk and you know goat cheese and stuff like that. So they are not vegan, but otherwise most of our products are vegan compliant, and mostly ninety five percent of our products are vegan compliant, and we use only plant produce. We don't use any form of animal produce. Any questions, ma'am? No, we are very engrossed in fact. <laughs> So let's move into the world of beverages, right? The alternate beverages as we talked. Uh, we have the zero alcohol spirits and liqueurs, which I will go in deep. We have the cocktail bitters, which I'll go in deep. Uh, syrup starts, finishers, cocktail mixers are something that I don't want to talk about today because, you know, it's not part of the uh, curriculum, let's be honest. <laughs> and tonic water concentrates, again, not something, but I will still touch, you know, give you a brief about what tonic water is and the likes. Okay. So this is our zero alcohol bitters. So what are bitters, right? Uh, I'm sure you will learn about these products when it comes to your f and uh, in the beverage space. So bitters are basically flavored, spiced, you know, concentrated alcoholic beverages, okay? Which are added in very, very minute proportions to improve the flavor 
or the aroma of a product of a drink okay but we have gone one step ahead we have manufactured the world's first non alcoholic bitters and these are purely spice blends spice blends fruit blends uh, flower blends you know vegetable blends and you know nothing uh, animal protein no animal protein nothing in it it's just purely plant based uh, and we are the world's largest in terms of zero alcohol variants where we have created 16 variants okay so we have a set of uh, spice based we have fruit based flower based and we also have vegetal based bitters now these are very common if you go into a bar okay when you go to have a cocktail for example in a bar you will always see people adding you know additions extra products into the drink which are generally bitters they add they are not only bitters they are called bitters because they are bitter but they are also there to enhance the aroma of a product aroma and the flavor of a product okay bitters are originally created as a medicine to cure stomach ailments and the way that they used to prescribe bitters was mix it with a shot of brandy and just drink it so it is good for the stomach alcohol helps in carrying the flavor and the spice and the oils so that is why it was you know served that way and the guy who made the first bitters his name was dr peshot it was back in 1700 and his bitters are still available right now available globally people still you know uh, buy them and i still i have a bottle of that and uh, it's actually very flavorful so we came across with a non alcoholic variant now why non alcoholic because we wanted to launch these products in india number one uh, we also wanted to get the non alcohol drinking community uh, you know bring them get bring them into the drinking average drinking community by giving them certain products which they never thought they would get right there are so many people in this world who don't drink it's not necessary that you know everybody should drink alcohol but you know it is for them bring about an inclusiveness in them as well give them a quality feel in terms of products in terms of you know appearance taste everything right make them also a part of the community because everybody needs to have fun right so that is why and uh, this was originally designed and formulated in japan in fact 11 variants were designed and formulated in japan and then the lockdown happened and we got all our formulations to india so when we say got all our formulations it's all the company is a heavily technology driven company because two of its co-founders own companies which are into blockchain and stuff like that traceable we work on projects with bitsubishi coca cola diageo worldwide right so technology driven the entire formulations were shifted to india and we started manufacturing these products here and then later on we developed five more right so these are some of this is what our bitters is all about uh zero alcoholic they are all herb based spice based or aromatic based when i say aromatic fruits flowers right and it's a versatile ingredient it's not necessary that you need to have it with alcohol you can even have two drops of bitters with a glass of water and it's excellent for your stomach uh the bitter that the what gives the bitterness is something called gentian and gentian is called kutki in hindi and it's been used in ayurveda since you know god knows when can i ask you to repeat the word once again uh the herb gentian uh you're not audible really yes sure. yes You're on audible now. Yes, yes. Okay, so the word is gentian. Gentian. G e n t i a n. Okay. Thank so you. gentian is kutki. It's extremely, extremely bitter, and uh, we are the only people in the world who could clarify gentian. So basically, uh, gentian is pitch black in color. So initially, when we started, all our product products were black in color, and we were a little worried, right? so somehow we managed to clarify it it was a eureka moment that we got at 2 in the night so we managed to clarify it and we are the only people in the world actually who can clarify gentian and we will not tell people the procedure so these are our aromatic bitters so we have uh, classic aromatic bitters with the aromatic leaven the one on the left the center is with orange blossom uh, the right hand side is called aromatic 13 so 11 12 13 is what we call Uh, 13 is very similar to the original bitters that was first made which is the peshot bitters right so it has notes of cherry anise spice and stuff like that 
then we have uh, the Japanese matcha bitters. We grow our own matcha tea in uh, the Shizuka province in Japan. It's supposed to be the most top grade matcha. So we sell our teas also to Europe and we have different varieties of teas, all Japanese. We sell to Europe. Uh, very, very expensive to be very honest. Each of them start from about six and a half to seven lakhs a kg. Then we have lotus bitters. We have mohe. Mohe is a South American sauce, chocolate, coffee. You know? So we have bitters for each and every flavor. That is what, uh, for every palate, right? We have Mediterranean spices. We have celery. We have fruity tropical flavors. Uh, one thing that we have very unique is the sandalwood bitters. Uh, first of its kind in the world. And unfortunately, it cannot be taken to the world. It can only be in India uh, because of uh, customs regulations. I ended up sitting in the customs office for six hours explaining to him what it is. So he thought we are smuggling sandalwood oil. So it happens. You can't do much about it. So that is one. Then we have Thai inspired, you know, your galangal, makrot leaves, kaffir limes, ginger, lemongrass. You know, these are the aroma. The last one is something called tonka bean bitters. Again, a very peculiar South American nut. Uh, very, very nutty, but uh, very subtle in terms when it comes to the palate. Then we have cherry. Uh, all varieties of cherry that you can think of. Sweet cherry, sour cherries, overripe cherries, maraschino cherries. You know, these are all going into the cherry bitters. Then we have chrysanthemum. So chrysanthemum was something that we had developed to uh, give it to the emperor of Japan when they changed. So every time the emperor changes, every company dedicates something to the emperor. So we developed a chrysanthemum bitters. The emperor sits on something called a chrysanthemum throne. So that is why we did the chrysanthemum bitters. Then we have fennel. Uh, fennel is not soft, but actual fennel bulbs. So very vegetal. Then we have the yuzu, which is the Japanese lemon. So these are all retailing in India and widely used by bars. We sell about 400 to 500 bottles of bitters every month to bars. So. That's about the bitters. Any questions that you guys have about bitters, I can take a five minute break. I want to drink some water. Guys, any questions? Nobody? Everybody is like. Does it uh, still have the same kind of a medicinal value that we are talking about when it comes to? Yes, the... it does. Because the base is a blend, each has a common base, which is a blend of about 15 spices and herbs. It's a very common base. The taste, how close is it to the actual bitters? Very similar, actually. Only thing you'll miss is the alcohol. So only the kick is missing, the rest is there. Yeah, but generally people don't have bitters, right? You can't drink bitters. Yeah. Because it's very bitter. And what kind of a market are you looking at? Oh. Huge. So we're looking at five star hotels. We're looking at, you know, premium restaurants and bars where they have either alcohol or non-alcoholic applications. No, anything. I can even sell my bitters to a juice fellow. And in the popularity index, where do you see it now? We have about a 65% market share in India. Thanks to the fact that Angustra is banned because it has got alcohol. So we are the only people manufacturing bitters in India. Uh, globally, also we export to Middle East a lot. We export to UK, uh, France, basically the EU, EU countries. Uh, we are slowly starting our export to US also once our Mauritius factory is ready. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't take science, uh, why I took hotel management, to be very honest, was because I couldn't take science and maths. But that is how it started, right? Now we have grown 15, 16 years now in this in this industry, so we have all grown. To love it, to be very honest, yeah. So these are the products that we have designed. Uh, Amaretto flavored liqueur. But do you know that, you know, any doctor or anybody would say, don't eat more than six or seven almonds a day. Does anybody know why? Can anybody tell me why? Is it because of the tannin content there? Tannin, tannin in the skin. No, no, Kareem, sir. No, yeah, please tell me. Almond right. contains cyanide. Yes, in minute quantities. Exactly. What, so anything more than 100 almonds can seeds. actually knock you off. Mm. Even apple seeds, I was told, contain some cyanide. Absolutely. Even apple seeds contain cyanide. Mm. Right? Right. So we don't use almonds. Uh, it is apricot that we use. 
So it's apricot kernels that we use, which taste very, very, very similar to an almond. And also when it is roasted, the aroma of your apricot kernels is almost a 99% match to an almond. So that is why we use uh, apricots and not almonds. Okay. Uh, the next one is the Amaro Italiano, which is basically an Italian Amaro. So Amaro is considered to be a digestive or an aperitive. It helps in you know building your appetite or it helps in digesting your food. So there are a lot of brands of Amaros which are there uh, globally, right? So we just created one which has notes of coffee, cola, and it is bittersweet. Then we have the Italian red bitter. So red bitter itself is a category of bitter liqueur, bitter liqueurs. Again, they are uh, aperitives. They are not digestives. They help in building appetite. Really, really good appetite such that uh, a drink of the red bitter as it is, or zero alcohol one, I ended up eating two pizzas. It's it's really something that builds up your appetite, right? It's citrus, it's herbal. It's called red bitter primarily because it is red in color. So globally, what they do is they use something called cochineal. Cochineal is a bug. So have you got, have you guys heard of this product called Campari? Yes. So. Our Italian red bitter is modeled around a Campari. It is not a Campari. It's modeled around a Campari, but we made it more herbal. Yeah. Then the product that we created was a Reposado spirit, which is uh, an agave spirit. Uh, agave spirits basically means your tequila and mezcal. Uh, we can't call it a tequila because it is owned by Mexico. So we just call it Reposado. Reposado means aged for about two to three years in casks. So we call it Reposado. Right. Then we have Negroni. Negroni is the world's most selling cocktail. Trust me, once you get into the field of F and B, right, and when once you start working in bars or restaurants as such, right, you would hear a lot about Negronis, a lot, and it is my favorite cocktail though. So we'll be launching these products sometime mid of December, and I may come to Hyderabad sometime in the first week of December. If I do, I'll get some for you guys. We're launching these okay. products. In fact, we are waiting for the tasting session, as you have promised. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So uh, apparently, uh, as of yesterday, I've been given a travel ban again by my company because COVID cases are rising. So I don't you know. I'm working around my way to get out of Bangalore. <laughs> I'm stuck here for the past two and a half years. I've not even gone home. So I need to get out. So these are some of the products that we are launching going forward. So we are doing sake. Sake is a Japanese rice spirit. We're doing two varieties of whiskey. There's a high malt and himitsu. Himitsu means secret in Japanese. So that's a Japanese single malt style. Then we are doing uh, a dark rum, a golden rum, a floral gin, vermouths, coffee liqueurs, you know, spice triple sec, which is an orange liqueur. Ocha sake is something which is very Japanese. It's a tea-based sake. Uh, it's a matcha tea-based sake. That's ocha sake. So these are products. So let's get into something very interesting, right? How do we make these products, right? So uh, three people who get into the R&D department. One is the owner of the company. One is me. And... One is a gentleman named Govind who actually touches the product. Uh, I am not allowed to touch the blends. I am only allowed to give him the flavor characteristics that I want. And once Govind prepares it, the boss tastes it. If it is approved, yes. Otherwise, it goes back into corrections. And finally, when boss approves it, it comes to me for approval. So that is the procedure that we follow in the farm, in our production facility, right? So we have a 30,000 square feet production facility of which 6,000 Square feet is our R&D lab. Uh, we have about 9,500 plus natural extracts. Uh, oils, uh, your oil sol oils, uh, water-soluble, as well as your sugar-soluble flavors. So these are the three varieties. We have about 9,500 plus. We are the third largest uh, flavor house for natural flavors in the world. And we have about 900 flavors only in citrus. So when I say citrus, limes, lemons, oranges, these are just three varieties, right? So we have about 900 varieties of citrus. Uh, some of them even I have not heard about the names. So that is the, uh, that's about our lab. And we use something called a cold distillation, or we also do something called a steam distillation to extract our products. There is no alcohol. There is no fermentation. None of these happen when we have to extract our liquids. Okay. So how does it work? Say, for example, I want to create a rum, right? 
so uh, i tell them see this is the kind of flavor notes that i want in terms of aroma and terms of palate so i tell i want you no know, notes of caramel hints of cinnamon spice you no know? uh certain notes of jaggery because jaggery rum is very nice uh i want say sugarcane element to come into it so i do this flavor match and i create something called a preliminary flavor wheel i'll get to i'll get to that in some time and i give it to the guy who produces it so he makes it based on what it is and then it comes to the boss so boss tests it now when i send the preliminary preliminary flavor wheel i have to give him in percentages how much percentage of what needs to come in what quantities you know and then see since we have already done the extraction of our products right we have about so many right in the world so we don't need to sit and extract again and again that is the plus point so we have larger quantities of these products so each of our trial batches is not more than 50 ml it's it's a very small batch right 50 ml so this is what is tried allowed to rest tested then again you know we rework if required allow it to rest for one two days and then again trials and correction so this is the entire cycle chain that happens so like it's mentioned there right you identify flavor profiles match your flavors you create a preliminary flavor wheel then you do distillation of natural ingredients in the original form uh flavor blending creating the product base again we reblend if required resting gestation period trials and corrections so this is our entire production facility uh, production method so once we have completed our trials and corrections and the product is approved then we go ahead and make a 1 liter batch and allow it to rest for like 6 7 months so that is where the production gets complete so once the 1 liter batch is ready then we have to do a lot of studies so what we generally do is we split that 1 liter batch into three different parts so we do something called an accelerated study right so destructive testing we sometimes boil the liquid okay so we boil the liquid for about flash flash boiling right for about 30 seconds to a minute allow it to cool then we bottle it immediately and put it in the freezer we allow it to like you know literally see whether it is freezing what's happening over there then we take it out keep it in room temperature then we put it in water water bath right moisture so how does each and every product react to these conditions is something that we do sometimes we even just throw it out in the sun just put it out no problem you know see how it is reacted to sunlight so the uv what are the things that can affect the product once that is done then we allow it to sit for about 10 12 days in you know normal shelf conditions then we try then we try and see whether there is a flavor drop you know what is the is there a change in the palate of the product is there some you know chemical changes that has happened into the product whether we need to redo it there are so many times that products that we have created have actually failed quite a lot in fact i created a coconut rum and the product was colorless right after all this testing it turned pink in color so there is actually a chemical reaction that's happened so that chemical reaction has actually happened inside my stomach also but you know we wouldn't know so <laughs> these are the kind of things that we keep trying trying we have to food technologies also but sometimes they like to play with us right they say like, hey try this it's nice try this try this i have had a lot of days when i have not eaten food you know when i have not able to drink anything not even water because certain flavors are so strong and so potent that they are all at like 1 to 1000 dilution and if you need to understand something we actually need to try it so uh, you must have heard of carolina reaper is the world's most spicy chili right and one of the least spicy chili is jalapeno least spices right so our jalapeno extract which is at 1 to 1000 is actually at 2 million squares which is 1.5 times more spicy than a carolina reaper and i had actually had to try it because i need to know what is happening right how does it feel <laughs> so i'm sure the experience would have been out of the world <laughs> yeah yeah totally out of the world i didn't eat for the entire day after that i couldn't eat so these are some of the shelf life studies that we do then once you know the product passes all this then we send it to the government approved labs uh for something called accelerated shelf life study so it depends on how much shelf life do you want in a product right so if you want a 6 month shelf life they keep it with them for 3 months so they do all these tests it's just a way of telling that you know we are also doing it for you right but you know when we do it ourselves we can't give them a certificate they need to give us a certificate of the product so we're just being doubly sure 
once that is done then it again rests on the shelf for 6 months so each product takes about a year to get launched into the market i, I had a question here yes uh, when people talk about tea tasting and stuff they say you need to have a typical palate and you shouldn't be having anything spicy you shouldn't be having this or that so do you have something like that or it's a very similar thing any appreciation session will need that kind of a strict guideline mm -hmm. we don't follow it but we actually send it out to people who can follow it they charge but it is okay we send it to them thank you yeah and then once all this is done there is something very important for a zero alcohol a non alcoholic product or any food which is called a nutritional label testing you know how much calories how much sugar you know what happens all these things has to be specified it is a mandatory requirement so the product once the shelf life study is done then it goes into the nutritional label testing uh, in case of our products we just want to be doubly sure because see there are a lot of times when you actually extract citrus fruits there is a mild presence of alcohol that is formed there were two three products which i had to reject because they had 0.1% alcohol so i don't want that even if it is 0.01 i still you know try to work around it and try to make it a 0.0.0 0.00 right uh, because see we don't want to create any cultural differences you know there are a lot of problems right uh, so many countries which are actually our uh, primary market like your middle eastern countries you know most of the i don't want to say it but most of the muslim countries right they are all our primary markets because they don't have alcohol they don't drink alcohol so we are giving them something very interesting so you know they all need these kind of certifications zero alcohol testing they need halal certification testing so it is all mandatory requirements that they need so what we do is we do it mandatorily for all our products doesn't matter where it is going even if it is going to the uk it goes with all these certificates if it's going to us it goes with all these certificates it's it's always better to be safe than to be sorry right so alcohol testing certificate is very 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 important especially when you are claiming to be 0.00% alcohol so some of our products are actually 0.3 decimal places zero alcohol so we are like that safe and that sure that our products don't contain any alcohol or traces of alcohol and second thing is we don't manufacture our products you know we don't have an alcohol license so there is no alcohol in our production facility also so again that is one thing that is you know we're saying that we are very safe we are non alcoholic like out and out right so let's see what is the flavor wheel right so this is the preliminary flavor notes that i give to the uh person in the r and d lab just see so this is for our reposado reposado is a zero alcohol tequila or mezcal however you want to call it So this is how I give him the breakdown. This is what I would want. This is the flavor note, and then once he's done, I again create one similar thing to see how close we are, or how uh, how much we have deviated from the base, right? And that is after tasting, and I create this. This is basically. uh this is a very a distillers requirement so how does your palate move right from one end to the other how does your aroma move what is it that you get first what do you get second how does it move the same thing that has got to do with the the mouth feel also right so after that i do this so this is the complete flavor breakdown so these are all percentage based huh? that is why they are like this i didn't add those values but yeah so the size of the thing is based on the percentage so i need to break down each and every product into as minute as possible so if it's fruity what kind of fruit is it what fruit category does it fall into does it fall into stone fruits core fruits tropical fruits you know any what are watery stewed fruits melons is another character characteristic so i have to break it down further and further and then finally come out with what is it actually i can just write it just got apples pineapples and bananas no but i have to break it down this way so each of this take about uh, about 300 ml of uh, consumption of one particular product and about 2 3 hours
So this is for our reposado. And uh, this is for our zero alcohol Negroni. So do you have some kind of a comparative flavor note chart from uh, the alcoholic one? No, I don't. Then how do you build on it? It's basically because of the flavor profiles that we know. We don't get these details. We don't get it. If I have to create an alcoholic, uh, non-alcoholic version of an alcoholic product, then I need to follow the same procedure of creating this one and then getting into this and doing this for the non-alcoholic variant. So it's different because see, alcohol is a carrier of flavors. In our non-alcoholic products, we don't have a carrier of flavor. Mm -hmm. It's water based, right? So it is more, it's a challenge more difficult. Thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolute challenge. In fact, uh, there was a product, right? The Himitsu malt. So I was asked to create that. And I said, I have never had a Japanese whiskey in my life. So my boss hands out a bottle to me. It has exactly two ml of whiskey. So this is what I have. Do something. So <laughs> we created the product, yes. But yeah, it still in works. So do you have any kind of a laboratory setting where you get all these flavor notes or it is only dependent upon a person and the person's palate? It is so to create to start creating it is always dependent on the person's palate and his nose. Uh, yes, we have a proper laboratory setting. Yes, we have that. But uh, I know there and work because it is too many flavors in there. I can't sit there for more than 15 minutes. It's too much of flavors. So I go out, sit out in a bench, Aram say under the trees, and I sit there and work. Because you you cannot have anything that is masking your aroma and your palate at that particular point of time. Thank you. So that's the thing. And this is how the Negroni tastes. The world's most selling cocktail. Actually, second most sold cocktail globally as of 2020. This is how it is. These are the things that you get on your palate, on your nose, on your mouthfeel. So yes, so next we have packaging and bottling. Uh, so bottles are all, you know, we heat the bottles. Uh, pasteurizing happens of the liquid. Uh, it happens at about we don't do like what Louis Pasteur said, 102 degrees for so many minutes or no. So these days, technology is much more advanced. We have, uh, it's called flash chilling and flash heating that we follow. So at 70 degrees for 30 seconds and immediate drops down to four degrees for 15 seconds. And then again goes into something called a hot filling. So the product is filled hot inside the bottle. So it's hot, filled at about 65 degrees in the bottle. Once it is bottled, immediately it goes into capping. So we have caps. Once it is capped, then there is a layer of something called a shrink ceiling. So it just falls on top. It basically avoids any kind of counterfeit. Shrink ceiling is done, then it goes into barcoding. So your batch number, date of manufacturing, all those details get fed into the on the bottle. And then your bottle is ready. And this is how our zero alcohol spirits are going to look like. These are bottles. So on the right is just an example of the bottle. Uh, on the left are all the products that we're launching, the branding part of it. So it's Reposado and it's Amaretto in the bottom. So Amaretto is actually, it's not cherry blossom flowers. That's almond blossom. They look very similar to cherry blossoms. So we decided to do that. And these are some of the awards that we won. Uh, 21 awards in the last five months. Products. This this award is something that we call the Oscars. Uh, it's very difficult. There are only three awards that are offered for zero alcohol companies. There were about 65 brands that participated. Of which two of our products won two awards. So that's one. Then these are the international wine spirits competition where we won awards for our bitters as well as our zero alcohol products. Some of the products that we didn't release also we sent across. Like you have, you see the Umeshu on top. 
Umeshu is actually a plum liqueur. It's a Japanese plum liqueur. So that one, a silver. So I think there is one product, right? Uh, no. The Ron Oscuro is a dark rum. That one, the bronze. The first awards that we won are the first two on the left. That's your spirit business. We won the masters and the gold. So that's for the Amaretto and Amaro. Apart from that, the last product that you see on the right is a cherry blossom sake. It's still in works, but you know, we just happened to send it across for, let's see what, what happens, right? So we just sent it across and we got the bronze for tasting, autumn tasting. And this is especially for China. You don't have an option, but to get these awards if you need your products in China. So we won two golds, one silver, one bronze. Otherwise, Chinese will not even look at you. They're like a different world, right? So this is some of our tasting notes for our, uh, your Amaretto and the Amaro Italiano. You can read through. So people who don't drink, smoke, drink tea, don't eat good food, you know, <laughs> who eat stale bread, who don't eat spices, salt, sugar, they write like this. You need to be trained to become this, but yeah, this is the process. I, I am actually a WCT level two. So in one of my classes in my level two, I was actually in a vineyard and I went through this kind of a regime for a week, right? So I'm getting bread that was prepared two days ago. I will not get cheese. I will not get milk, no coffee, no tea. I'm drinking water all the time. So I'm getting boiled vegetables, boiled meats. These are my lunch and dinner. So this is how you train your palate. And so think about people doing this for their life, right? Good money though, very good money. I should get thousand dollars a tasting, but that's a lot. Yeah. But uh, the end result is this. <laughs> so I didn't want to continue. I don't want to become somebody like this. So this is about the products. That's about it. So now question time. See, I finished on time. You have 30 minutes to ask me questions. How many other questions you want? Come on, people, don't be silent. So let me ask you guys a question. I need somebody to answer, right? Not the, not Rachna ma'am or not Puneet sir. Okay. So you go to a restaurant, right? You go to eat food. I know you guys are all 18 plus, so it's okay. I can have decent talks with you guys. So you go to eat food, you go to drink alcohol at a bar, right? You go out. Say you're not drinking alcohol. What do you generally drink? Hello? Somebody say something. Oh, hi, Vamshi. I fall under this category where I go to a bar and all my friends are drinking and I'll have to take a mocktail. To be honest, I fall in that category. <laughs> okay, you drink a mocktail. What kind of a mocktail do you generally drink? Probably with a limited, uh, this thing they just make something out of a probably orange juice, pineapple juice, very simple ones. Right. Thank you for not saying fresh lime soda. <laughs> Great. Anybody else? Uh, maybe a mojito. Oh, okay, super. Uh, so you go out with people who drink or you go out with people who don't drink? <laughs> people who don't drink. People who don't drink. Oh, great. What do you see them drinking generally? Uh, people who don't drink or the people who drink? People who don't drink. I say mojito or lemonade. Lemonade and rice, right? So yes. it's something that you actually get at the comfort of your house, right? Why do you really need to go to a club or a, you know, a bar or somewhere to drink a a lemonade or a, you know, a soda or something like that. Correct. So this is one of the primary reasons why we decided to get into these product lines, right? Giving people an option to have good quality products, premium products at actually affordable prices. So this is one thing. Excellent. So when you had gone, uh, have you seen which place did you go to? Are you all in Hyderabad or are we all at home at your hometowns? Most of them are at Hyderabad right now. Oh, excellent. Very nice. 
so have you guys gone to places in and around uh, jubilee hills and all the likes have you gone to see what's happening party spaces and stuff like that don't worry your packages are there but don't feel bad about it it's okay so before covid i used to do it now i don't okay because of covid so i somehow became very comfortable at home <laughs> life must move on <laughs> right great so what are some of the places that you have been to i have been to there used to be a vapor bar okay then there is on the moon over the moon two three bars i mean four five of them in and okay. around jubilees and manjara hills right okay nice where is where is otm okay where is sorry sir where else have you been over the moon Uh, there used to be a bar called Vapor Bar. I know Vapor. Yeah. And there is a place called Tiki Shack. Not that great though. Okay. And Tiki Shack. Yeah. Fat, fat Pigeon. Fat Pigeon. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, this nice. is what I remember. Recollect. So, did you find any change or difference in terms of the mocktails that are there, and you know, things like that, or are they all standard everywhere? They are all standard everywhere. All standard everywhere, right? So you always wanted to have a choice, right? Correct. Yes. Great. Okay. Nice. Anybody else? Nobody has any questions. We uh, we are all actually stuck because of the connectivity issue. Our net ah, is okay. completely off. Oh God. And, okay. And uh, we are all streaming, or rather, we are all uh, connected using our phones right now. Oh, okay. And that would be one reason why maybe our students are also not able to. Pitching in between. Pitching in between. No problem. I'll wait. I can. I have time, right? You have time, right? Yes. So the products that you just showed us are these available right. in the market in Hyderabad? These products will be available in the market from fifteenth uh, of December. These products, right? Yes. These will be available from the fifteenth of December. Our bitters are available in the market for the past eighteen months or so. Oh, so these can be picked up over the counter from any retail store or? No, these it's... will be available only online. Okay. Yeah. So we just go like to the Amazon, Flipkart, Tata Click, okay. all these platforms. Yeah. Oh, perfect. That's good reach. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, I have a small query. Yes, please. Uh, hi, sir. This is Bhola Kumar, uh, taking care of FMB service of second year. Yes, sir. Nice. Pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, me too, sir. I have small query related to one herbs that is called marjoram, sir. Could you? Marjoram is a herb. Yes. Yes, sir. Huh? What would you like from Marjoram, sir? Would you like the Marjoram? Actually, what is Marjoram? And I have one more small query related to uh, the the name behind of Gormouth, sir. The name, how it is described, Gormouth, from ah, the Gormouth. Okay. Just I, explain in a brief, in a brief, sir. That's all. For sure, sir. I will be more comfortable in explaining about Gormouth than Marjoram. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I'm not wrong, Marjoram is if I'm not wrong is carom seeds. I I don't know. I'm not very sure about it, to be very honest. Okay. But uh, yeah, vermouth. Vermouth got is a French term. It got its name from wormwood, right? So wormwood is actually the bark of a bark. tree, right? Uh, so the wormwood tree. So they take the bark, which has been used, which has been known to have a lot of medicinal properties. Okay. So this was used as a key ingredient. In the blend to make the aromatized wine. So your vermouths are all aromatized wine, right? So along with brandy and a lot of other spices that go into it, wormwood was always used in a vermouth. Okay, so that is how it got its name, vermouth, because one of the key ingredients was wormwood. So wormwood is a tree, right, sir? Wormwood, yes. Wormwood. 
again there is a small quantity related to that tonic water sir uh, mm -hmm. so tonic water can be made up of only uh, this one a juniper berry or any of the vegetable or or, or, or seeds or a, or a berry so tonic water is originally made with quinine right why it is so called quinine. tonic sir why it is called tonic sir okay so this happened long time ago when the british were fighting some kingdoms in india Yes. There are two, three different stories for this. One story says that it was during the East India Company's attack of the uh, during the 1757 war, which I don't believe is true. Then there are some stories which say it was during the war between Tipu Sultan and the British, right? Yes, yes, so wherever it was fought, right? So the problem was there was a lot of malaria. Yes. And these British troops are all affected by this. So the doctor who was there in the British troop used to prescribe a shot of quinine. I say shot of quinine, a small dosage of quinine. And this quinine was extremely, extremely bitter. Hmm. They didn't know how to have it, right? But, you know, it's very difficult to, you know, just to have as it is. So what they used to do was they used to mix gin to it. Yes. So this quinine medicine was called tonic. So they say it gin was added to tonic to make it palatable. So it is accidentally given or it is just like that? No, quinine is actually a medicine to fight uh, malaria. Tonic in the sense of... Like, like it was called tonic, tonic, like we call, right? We call any medicine as tonic, right? Any liquid tonic, medicine yes. as tonic. Okay. So uh, uh, like uh, 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 an hour before you are showing some flavor like cucumber, like many, many other flavor tonic. Huh. What is that? Thing? So that's about the tonics, right? Wait, I'll go back to this. Yes, side. sir. Yes, sir. I'm disturbing you. I uh, just, you know, just to know. No problem, sir. Please, more, please. More so, this tonic water, water concentrates, right? Yes, sir. The same okay. one. So, so, uh, so, tonic water is generally quinine based. Okay. Uh, you don't get natural quinine anymore. Most of the countries have put a ban on export of natural quinine. So, most of the com companies use something called HCQ, hydroxychloroquinine. You must have heard a lot about this name during the uh, COVID pandemic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Because they say it is a medicine. No, it is not a medicine. Don't worry. So a lot of uh, tonic water companies made good use of it and tried to sell a lot. Okay. Oh, I'm drinking, you know, HCQ. But HCQ is an artificial uh, quinine. It is not natural. It's chemically derived. Okay. So we moved away from quinine completely. We are one of the few companies in the world which actually make a quinine-free tonic. We use Gentian again. Again, Ayurvedic principles, right? So what does quinine do? generally in a drink. Let's not get into the medical part of it. But otherwise, a quinine only adds bitterness. Yes. So why do we need to add quinine to make it bitter? So we added gentian and made it more healthy. Now, when you are moving uh, a bottle of tonic water, you are actually shipping a lot of water, which is basically increasing the carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So and also cost. Your cost goes high for shipping water. Why do you want to do that? So we decided to do something called concentrates or tonic syrups. So one bottle of a tonic water concentrate can make 50 tonic water servings. Okay. So we made it more efficient, right? And we started working out on different flavors. So flavors, some flavors are very common, like the Indian tonic water is very common. Cucumber is very common, right? So we started working on different other flavors for the market. You know, we need to create to get, a different so kind so of originality. To get, the, to get the bitterness, you must have put a gentian, right? Gentian, that is correct, sir. It is a Indian herb or the European? Indian. Indian. Very Thank Indian, you actually. Much, uh, Balakrishnan, sir. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. So so these are the different varieties of tonic water that we made. Yes, Puneet, sir. Am I audible? Very much. Loud and clear, sir. Just want to find out. There is something called as galangal. It is very commonly yes. used in Chinese cuisine and also in uh, Kashmiri cuisine. Do you also have some product which uh, has got uh, galangal in it? Uh, only our Thai bitters. Oh, I galangal see. is also known as Thai ginger. Yes, yes, absolutely. So our Thai bitters, one of our 16 cocktail bitters, uh, the Thai yes. bitters, I can show that to you. The one in the center, that contains galangal, that has galangal. Okay, okay. Galangal root extract. Mm -hmm. All right, good yeah. enough. And do we also have something like, you know, let us say an, uh, a non-alcoholic red wine or a non-alcoholic white wine? I don't know. 
uh, we have just developed non alcoholic vermouth but okay. to create a non alcoholic wine the biggest problem is tannins mm mm-hmm. so we tried extracting tannins through different modes like for example even oak wood right is lot of tannins yes. we try to extract that we try to extract from tea uh to extract tannin from a grape is actually very difficult so we tried from the pips and seeds and all that but we were not getting tannins we are only getting the flavor so oh. yeah so you need tannins in a red wine for sure so that is one of the reasons why we said no we can't do it okay. and if we have to use an oak oak cask which is new it is extremely expensive and quantity size right we don't get less than 200 liters in this country so mm. we can't sit and manufacture 200 liters just for trial <laughs> where our trial batches are just 50 ml to be honest so mm. yeah so one of the reasons why we dropped wine okay 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 all right then we also thought we'll put an oak stave and see right we thought we'll put an oak stave oh. but then we were already getting uh, oak staves that have been used for maturing whiskey we're not getting any virgin oak stave mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we said no okay. let's not do it okay do we also use some uh, spice from the indian kitchen you know spices like you know uh, uh, cumin or uh, uh, turmeric or some other similar spice indian so kitchen all of them because we spoke, about, we spoke about you know marjoram and we spoke about Correct. thyme and basil etc right what about in uh, you know spices a lot of them sir a lot of them to be very honest so our aromatic bitters is actually a blend of 35 different spices which is the primary oh. base so mm. everything goes into it okay okay very nice very nice yeah from cinnamon to cardamom to cloves you know everything we use a oh, lot right. of uh, yeah caram seeds you know quite a lot cumin of cumin yes yes okay okay good enough very nice thank you so much uh, you welcome sir in fact we also use khatta hing your uh, raw hing right hing as a flavor yes. it's got a very strong flavor but yes very strong but but they are generally masked by the flavor of uh, cloves and cinnamon oh, but it's, i think it should dominate over other flavors it's very very strong no so the extract of clove that we have is really strong it's oh. extremely strong yeah all right all right so we use a lot of spices indian spices indian leaves boraj indian boraj then we use tulsi your holy basil mm-hmm. a lot of things that we use sir oh very nice so so yeah. interesting to know all these things you know it's a great learning experience for all of us and we're learning so many things today mm-hmm. thank, thank you great. thank thanks. you thank you thank you mr bola any more questions uh, no, no sir thank you very much uh, sir thank you mr vamsi or maybe mr shantanu if he's with us and uh, so, i don't know we got quite a few chefs with us also oh sure yeah. if they've got some uh, you know queries or questions they can please uh, go ahead uh, mr sam uh, if you can uh, hear me yes sir yes sir yeah any any queries Hi, from bala yeah yeah mr bala uh, how how are your bitters and your spices spice blends priced they start from 1100 plus tax for our bitters for a 100 ml bottle and they go up to Twelve fifty to thirteen hundred per bottle plus tax plus eighteen percent GST. Yeah. Once open, what's going to be the shelf life like? Uh, I still have products which are manufactured five years ago, so till now there has been no problem. Good. But on paper, because this is the first of its kind category, FSSA has requested to add uh, shelf life of one year. Best before. Okay. Best before. Please. the spice blends and the sprinklers and the uh, salts are they also available on uh, online very soon sir probably in the next 15 days the product is ready the packaging is happening so probably in the next 15 days and when you speak about your salts uh, where where is this where is your salt uh, sourced from uh, in our seasoning sprinklers marinades we don't add salt sir if if, if i remember uh, a product uh, there is a product line on uh, various types of salts right no salts no we don't have sir yeah maybe we don't have salts it's just syrups and stuff like we don't have salts fine 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 
thank you thank you yeah, mr balaji there is no sort used what is the preservative used how how do you you know enhance the shelf life of your products then of these marinades there is no sort used so vitamin e sir vitamin e you said yes tocopherol natural okay. preservative mm -hmm. all right all right wonderful thank you you welcome sir So just a small question. Sure. How long does it, from an idea to the product coming to the market? Let's say a bitter that you want to try. How long right. does it take for you to come up with this idea? And by the time it's into the market, it takes about two to three years. Oh, well, that's a huge uh, timeline. Yeah. So once one product is created, then it is easy to launch the remaining product range within nine months. Right, sir. Thank so you. So the first product always takes a lot of time. In fact, yes. our even in our. Uh, zero alcohol spirits your amaretto the first range that you see on the left hand side right so the first two products took about 3 years to actually get into the manufacturing process oh yeah it took 3 years from r and d but once you know it came to india then we had the recipe breakdown it was much more faster and easier right so thank oh, you so expensive much. is the entire procedure very extremely expensive so to make an amaretto we need about uh about 3 and 1/2 kgs of apricot kernels and each kg of apricot kernels cost us about 700 euros so when i say one batch i'm talking about a 1000 liter batch yeah 700 euros per batch per kg and we are talking only about one product one bitter here yeah one of these amaretto liqueur yeah so each product varies from the source and the cost of the raw material so amaretto would probably retail at about 2800 for a 750 ml but a uh, reposado would retail at about 1500 1400 1500 range rums would retail at about 700 600 700 range so so what would be your entire capital investment in such a case that's a lot i'll be very honest that's a lot so <laughs> since this is getting recorded and put on youtube figure. i don't want to talk about it <laughs> it's actually a lot it seems to be quite quite uh, capital intensive here it is it is very capital intensive but it also has you know the investment also happens because of what the market needs right so we don't find it, it thankfully till now you know we actually plan products in such a way that at least 30% of it will go redundant we need to do that so the quantity of production depends on that so what would be your budget and maybe the revenue that you are anticipating or expecting and how fast do you expect your market to grow see we want to do about at least 50000 cases by the end of next year and the market is growing at about 300% globally year on year so it's a cumulative growth right and uh, companies larger companies are actually taking at least 5% of their marketing spend say if they have a budget of 25% marketing spend for their alcohol products out of the 25% they're taking 5% and putting it into non alcoholic products which itself is very huge considering the fact that many companies just have only one or two brands one or two products in their range right So, so when we talk about your clientele, maybe uh, if you're talking about hotels, who would be your prominent clientele right now? Maybe brands. See, hotels. We work with almost all the hotel chains. Uh, in fact, uh, Taj is huge. Oberoi is huge. ITC is really, really huge because we work very closely in R&D with them as well. Then uh, in the culinary side, though, then your brands like your Hyatt, Hilton. Hilton is actually coming up to be very huge. In fact, we should be present in all the Hilton hotels across India. very soon so these are the things these are different brands name it and we have worked with them so from the smaller brands to the larger ones everybody and what has been the general feedback in such a case see with our zero alcohol there. zero alcohol products it is very very new in the market right and we couldn't introduce the bitters also to them properly because we lost about a year in covid so it is just now that it is happening and 
general feedback is that out of the 16 variants at least 10 to 11 variants are working without any problem are selling regularly and zero alcohol spirits we have not even sold a single bottle till now so it's just been sampling that's happening it it is a so very it's quite challenging thing. overall absolutely yes in fact i sit here the same way i'm uh, talking to the students here i do virtual tasting sessions with the hotels <laughs> it is difficult but can't help it in fact tomorrow i have a tasting session with the royal orchid group based out of bangalore uh mr bala yes mr bala one more small query when i mm-hmm. was there at the first slide i was uh, busy with some notes sir uh, in that is that uh, slide what you are showing right in the right now zero uh, no 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 sir the, the the current one the current one okay the four the four uh, uh, yes sir ha 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 change it change it sir ah uh, yes the same zero alcohol spirit correct zero what is the term zero you use sir spirit means some alcohol is there no sir yes very good question so what is happening globally right is that people are manufacturing non alcoholic products which taste like a spirit which feel like a spirit you know but don't have any alcohol in it so they are now being it's a global phenomenon that is happening it's a global change that is happening and these are being categorized as zero alcohol spirits what many companies do is they follow the same procedure of distillation of any product okay like you're making a whiskey i'm making a whiskey with alcohol then they go through another very expensive procedure which is called dealkalizing the product they remove the alcohol from the product yes okay so what is happening when they are doing this is it's a very expensive procedure it's a very similar to your remove remo- what is it called uh, reverse osmosis ro yes okay they follow this procedure to remove alcohol completely but alcohol traces are always present once it has been produced so first they make naturally then they de you know alcoholized it de alcoholized then further they give the name zero alcohol spirit right exactly because some some you know some amount will be there correct that is why it is called zero alcohol spirits and liqueurs but it that is not is 100% alcohol free right that is correct that is global products but our products we don't say if i have to make a whiskey right i don't allow the product to ferment okay it is maceration distillation there is no fermenting in between it is just maceration distillation and then we blend it with the base we have created a particular base for our products it can't be water because you can't show density correct alcohol has density right sir so we created a base which resembles alcohol very closely in terms of mouth feel uh, palate uh, texture and viscosity so we blend it with that finally so without fermentation how can you produce sir through the maceration so cold, yes cold so we do something called cold distillation or we do steam extraction so uh, what we do is primarily water or liquid co2 which helps in extracting our uh, flavors in fact our flavors are much much more potent than what you would get out of distillation okay. at least 500 times more potent okay. good thank you so we use something called a rotary evaporator sir rotary yes a new term i learned today rotary evaporation my god <laughs> rotary that is called uh, to like to uh, like uh, uh, that through the evaporation you expect the flavor of alcohol right that correct sir i have a image of rotary evaporator hey ah uh, this one i have taken a screenshot this is what the device through which correct. you do the rotary evaporation that's great sir the new concept without taking help of fermentation correct you can also do regular distillation with this with fermentation also not required that it is not necessary but this is a very cost effective a and it is a very quick method 
So yes. each procedure will take about thirty to forty minutes for us. That's great. Sir. Unlike three to four hours when it comes to distillation. Great. Good. Good, sir. Got it. Sir, I have another question. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, you know, since you are a company which is zero alcohol, mm -hmm. let's say the soft drink manufacturers or the alcohol manufacturers, mm -hmm. do you see? Do you, do they see you as a threat? Keeping the cost aside. do they see you as a threat in the market uh not really not in india though because they still believe that you know we can't do anything over here so okay, <laughs> okay with the indian market but uh, see globally even your alcohol companies are actually starting a lot of zero alcohol brands there are a few reasons one it helps them in surrogate advertising yes. right which they don't they cannot do through alcohol brands secondly they are also targeting the non alcoholic segment with their presence in the non alcoholic space right people who don't drink alcohol correct there is no country where everybody drinks alcohol there are people who don't drink alcohol right so you always have this kind of a segment which they can target with their non alcoholic products right thank you sir thank you so much bala for joining us no problem ma'am good uh, just hand over because we are all sort of crippled thanks to the internet sort of <laughs> giving up on us right now no worries and i just hand this over to saraswati madam and i request sure. her to say a few words now yes please balakrishna i think i you have changed so much that i am unable to make out i was telling rachna i don't know this gentleman <laughs> she said don't worry madam he knows you <laughs> very well who will not know you ma'am <laughs> uh, maybe you know there's a lot of change so i'm not able to connect the face actually so i must try to look uh, look out for the photograph and then try to connect there's a lot of change so somehow vaguely we may forget the names but faces definitely we remember but there seems to be a lot of change of course for me also there must be changes i have grown much older 2006 and 2021 there's a huge gap 15 years ma'am thank yeah so thank you so much for joining today and sharing and it, i i'm sorry i couldn't i joined and i had to leave in between for some work uh, related this thing exams are going on so so many other things no problem ma'am dropping up and fortunately we have the entire thing through your youtube so i'm sure we we will be able to find some time to watch it once again so absolutely please really do. refreshing and of course initially itself i was there the cherry blossom and sakura and why it is there for some time i was there after that i had to get out and i had to do some work there was a lot of people coming going out so uh, we shall definitely get in touch once again with you for the second years who will be coming because uh, they have a lot to do with wine spirits beverages so maybe we can have one more session little later for but sure. apart from this um, i'm sure we can tap on you for our golden jubilee celebrations which uh, we are celebrating with our institute you know has complete uh, has entered the 50th year and uh, please get in touch with your other classmates also inform them so we plan to have a lot of events and we plan to enter into the limca book of world records and various things so lovely. some of you who are there in different fields definitely we'll get in touch with you for any kind of help that we require in terms of using your experience and expertise so we shall uh, i think uh, the letter as such we have not posted in the uh, website we shall do so but i'm sure there is lot of uh, this thing uh, activity happening in terms of uh, being posted in facebook our website insta and so on i hope you have joined the alumni group uh, for each year rachna is taking care of it so i okay. hope you and your batchmates have joined if not please do so and be part of the celebrations because uh, 50 years is a milestone and it's a Absolutely. very big achievement for all of us and some of us uh, may not be there for the next uh, uh, the thing uh, uh, celebration such as 60th year or, or 70th year and so on So, so i mean the people whom you know many of us might retire by the time the institute comes to the 70th year and so on correct so when we are all there and whom we know it is best to connect and stay per, connected and do something for the alumni so thank you so much and we shall definitely be in touch with you thanks a lot 
and i'm sure the students and many of the faculty were also equally enthusiastically participating i'm sure all of us benefited from it thank you thank you welcome ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you bye bye thanks again most welcome ma'am with all the glitches and everything i think we managed to pull it off and like madam was saying that we would like you to repeat maybe the entire session once again for the next lot of second years for sure so we'll bank on you i think we'll have a physical that, session that time we are also banking on you for the december session where uh, possibly we'll have a tasting session like you said so that for sure i will try my best introduce to all the uh, bitters that you spoke about for sure ma'am i'll get some along with me thanks a lot you're most welcome it was great you. having you over here likewise likewise ma'am have a great evening you too bye bye i get into my next call now <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you bye bye all the second years kindly stay connected don't leave the group please <clears throat> second years can stay connected don't leave the group please i have to uh, madam madam madam